Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in a prior video we took a look at this Glass Owl Infrared Night Vision Binocular Set from the company Creative XP. Now in that video we had a first look and first impression of this product to see how it would perform but I have yet to get it out into the field for some good deep and I would say in-depth field testing. But here today we have another product from the company Creative XP. This here is the Glass Condor. So instead of a pair of binoculars, this is a monocular. And again, an infrared night vision monocular. And what we're going to do is get a first look and impression of this. And then getting out into the field, well, I'm going to have two of these products to take a good look at and get some good in-depth field use with both of these. But today again, it's all about the monocular. What we're going to do is a full unboxing, a full initial impression and general feature look at this. And then we're going to get this out into the field in the future for some good use and field footage. So at this point, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor. Stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Creative XP who did provide this product for review. So, yes, again, this is the Glass Condor. Now, when you look at Creative XP, they have set out to come up with a number of very nice and high end hunting gear and hunting sort of apparatus. So everything from, again, optics like your night vision binoculars and now this monocular. They also have spotting scopes and trail cameras and then they have scopes for guns and all kinds of cool equipment. So today we're going to take a look at this monocular. Now for me I think this is going to be a very nice option because when you look at it compared to the binoculars this is a lot more compact and if you've been following my channel you probably realize I'm into the hiking camp and backpacking genre. Now, hiking and backpacking and going deep into the mountains and remote wilderness, two things. One, I always wonder what's around me. And two, whatever I carry needs to be fairly lightweight and compact. So the binoculars are really cool, but they're a little bit bulky and a little bit heavy. But taking a look at this monocular, I'm hoping it's gonna be that sweet spot where I can take the technology with me but in a much smaller and lighter form factor. And so now as we get into the details, here you'll see the glass condor box. So again, by Creative XP. And Creative XP is a husband and wife team that run the business here in the United States. So very cool. Now the products are partly made sometimes in the US um, and then obviously overseas as well. So you do end up with a lot of support from the United States, which is nice. So they do have good overall, and as you can see here, support services. So very, very nicely done. Now I have not had the opportunity nor the need to contact their support services, but they do seem to have very good feedback on all of the reviews that I've seen. So now getting into this, this, here the glass condor ir monocular pro is one of their newest products so this is a fairly new release and you'll see here as we get into this and removing it all from the packaging you'll see this monocular coming in a nice and compact pouch that's awesome that's what i was hoping to see and real quick we're going to compare it against the binoculars and so here you can see the case for the binoculars. Again, not very compact. And I love the idea and the technology. I think it's going to be great and I can't wait to get it out into the field. But again, just a little bit large for the hiking, camping and backpacking genre. Camping, yeah, maybe if you're car camping, you won't have a problem. But for me, where I'm usually on foot, that might be an issue. But here, you can see the monocular very much smaller. So a nice compact case here you'll see some d-rings in the front here just a nice little pouch for some accessories and getting into this here well let's open this up and we'll get a closer look so everything in here coming completely wrapped up let's get this noisy stuff out of here and wow here you'll see that is the creative xp glass condor pro really cool so very light. That's another thing I can tell you. This is nice and lightweight. Here you have your cover for the infrared mode. 
So really cool. And I'm wondering about the batteries, if this is already charged up. If this is like the other one, we're going to long press here and see what happens. Well, hard to say. So you see here, this is just a micro USB charging cable. Here we have what I believe is to be a power brick. So yeah, as I pull this out of here, just a charging brick. So very simple. So this is something that also came with the Glass Owl. This is a multi-port adapter to read a card. So for example, you can put a card right in here and you can record directly off of the monocular, which is very interesting. You end up with a strap for the case. So clipping onto those D-rings and actually just a small microfiber cloth. So here a coupon code for their spotting scope. And they do have a couple of different sizes, a free gift power bank, that's pretty cool. So I'm interested in that for sure. Their request to hear from you. So any comments or questions or suggestions, again, you'll see they are very big on customer service and that is a big deal. Some tips for using your monocular. So we may have to take a quick look at this and your user's manual. Now getting a quick look, I can tell you this user's manual already looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more polished than when I saw on the binoculars and that Glass Owl product. So already I can say that Creative XP does look to be upping the ante now that they've had some products out on the market and they are expanding their lineup. So, so far, very cool. And so as you can see, getting into this here, this compartment here has your USB charging port and also this has your memory card. So this should pop out, hard to say. It's a little hard for me to get my fingers in there and I don't have fingernails. I think that would probably pop out, but we'll just leave that for now. Moving forward here, you will see on the front of this, this is the battery compartment. So unthreading this. Now I already did, there was a little piece of paper in there to prevent the battery from making contact. And just removing it here, you'll see this battery here. This is like a CR123. Uh, looking close, actually, they're calling this a CR16340, 700 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt battery. And that is going to be rechargeable. So that's nice. So putting that in there, it'll pretty much stay in there forever. So not to come out. And that's going to be charged via micro USB cable. Now on the front here, you will see the objective lens. So there, nice large lens. And on the front here, this is your focus. So that's your main focus there. Here you'll see the IR emitter. So that is that infrared emitter. And this cap is used with the infrared mode. Now, if it is super bright outside, you could theoretically use that and cut down on some of the light and you can also take it off. So at night, you definitely need to remove this. This does filter the infrared light. So taking this and removing it in the infrared mode, but you'll see there, just able to focus through that small hole. That is the filter. On the back, this is what they call the diopter. So again and i don't know i'm not like a super expert at this to be honest with you one's the focus and the diopter they both kind of work hand in hand in order to properly adjust and focus the overall vision but moving around to the other side here you'll see the hand strap very simple and on top here these are your control buttons so the first one the main button as you long press here you will see this does turn on and what you'll notice is i do need to go through the settings here so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to demonstrate to you, but it can kind of do it here. So you'll see as we look inside the screen. Now there are different modes. You'll see that little icon there. This is now in photo mode, but pushing the mode button on the right hand side, you'll see this now goes to video mode. And I'm not sure exactly what this is. I need to take a look at this a little bit closer. I feel like this is somehow the settings. In the top, you can see the SD card, you can see your battery level, and you can see the actual zoom levels. And as we go through the rest of the buttons, here you have your infrared and you have your minus and plus. Now minus and plus both do zoom, but also adjust your infrared levels. And so for this demonstration, just gonna show you a little bit of what it would look like if you were looking through the monocular. So here you'll see just on the basic mode now, as I scroll here, you'll see I'm going to hit the plus button 
and that is going to zoom in and in and in. Now, if it gets to the point where it gets just a little bit grainy, you can adjust. So I'm just going to sort of fine tune here, try to get this into focus. Now it's close, but that's pretty good. And this isn't going to be perfect, but again, that's fully zoomed in. And I can adjust on the front. So between the front, so you'll see that goes real grainy. And now rocking that pretty much right into focus there. That looks pretty good. You can see this is a Black Rifle Coffee Club sticker. So pretty cool. And again, now if I back this out, so zooming using the minus button now, I'm just going to back that out. And you'll see, so pretty good zoom overall and a nice picture. This definitely looks very nice. Now, to go into the infrared mode, I am going to remove the cover and I'm going to press the infrared button. So here, this is technically the infrared mode. Now I'm going to turn off all the lights. And so killing all the lights here, you can see definitely still capable of seeing. Now at this point, the image does go a little grainy. So you got to kind of play with the focus here, rock it back and forth until it's clean. That was on the front adjustment. Now on the back adjustment here, just kind of rocking it and fine tuning it. And we'll get that nice and sharp. So for the most part, really, really good picture. So that looks nice. And so now with the lights back on, selecting the mode. Well, now I'm going to record so pressing the record button this is actual footage so you can see i get a little bit of flashing going on here looking up through my mirror at these stickers well now let's put the cap on so taking the cap and putting it in place this picture is super super clear Looking at my VanQuest sticker and my Helicon Tech sticker and working all the way up around Hogue, Grey Ghost, real clear. There's a nice K-Bar sticker. My buddies over at Hydra Knives and Artisan Cutlery. Mora. You ever seen Fowler? Tops Knives. Very cool. So look how clean this is. And again, Zooming in and in and in. That's working mighty nice. And now, if I really wanted to, I can fine tune this focus just a little bit. It's hard to hold still. I'm struggling just a bit. But there you go. The optics on these are very nice. Very well done. And so now, pretty much as you can see, it is essentially pitch black out here. Now as I go through the modes and pressing record while looking around here, I'm going to start to see some things that we've looked at in the past. So the first thing is I'm zooming in on my patio, which right here, just kind of dialing it in. Well, let's see, I'm trying to get everything in focus and in that infrared mode right now, it is just a little dark, but I'm going to bounce between my infrared modes. So here, hitting the infrared button infrared one two three four five infrared mode one two three four five six seven eight nine goes all the way up to nine and then just fine-tuning this zoom here and you can see when I accidentally block the infrared with my thumb the fine-tune on that focus real nice so yeah looking around here it's going to be a little bit difficult but you really do need to kind of stay on the focus with this you can see the detail in my neighbor's house there that's their gutters looking down the side of the house now looking the opposite direction here we can see some pretty good detail Clearly seeing windows, a lamp, looking even further out into the distance here. 
This is my neighbor's house in the opposite direction. You can see their chimney clearly all the way to the top. And actually, you can see the neighbor's house even beyond. Now removing this from the tripod, this is gonna be a little more difficult, but you can see all the way out to the fence lines. And actually you are seeing a real bright fence literally all the way at the adjacent street. So that's pretty far away. Now I can tell you the monocular doesn't have quite the same power and clarity as the binoculars. The binoculars were very, very good. And to be clear, this is on infrared mode nine. Turning it off, you can see a clear difference. So again, LED one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so clicking through those different modes i feel like each one of them didn't change quite as much as i would have expected and now finally last direction you can see skylight side of the house lower level that's actually my fence right there some trees and just finally, as I walk over, you can see the monocular is looking at my wood pile. And here, sliding into frame, not too bad. And so I think there are a couple of things worth considering with the monocular. First is, it does create a little bit of night blindness. So as you're looking through here, it's an LED screen that's illuminating directly into your eyeball. Now, granted, yes, it's dark out and it's nighttime and you're using the infrared, but the screen is bright. So after staring at that for a little while and then taking it away, it's kind of like disorienting. And at that, it's really hard to see. Now, I didn't have quite the same problem with the binoculars simply being, I think because you don't need to really put it right up to your eye and it's both eyes. I think it's just a little less strain. But overall, this is pretty cool. I am looking forward to getting this into some good field use. Now, that was a really basic and preliminary look at this. There is so much more to be had with a device like this. It really takes getting used to it, practice, and figuring out the optimum way to use it. Now, of course, this was really quick, just a preliminary look at it. But with that said, there is a lot more to do. So as I mentioned, moving forward, I will be doing some extensive field testing using both this glass condor and the glass owl pro models. I'm going to use these out in the wilderness environment, look around, look at distance. And I have some very nice infrared flashlights that I think are going to help to enhance the experience. But again, that's about it for now. I would like to say thank you very much again to the people at Creative XP who provided these for review. Definitely interesting products. I like them. I am very, very intrigued. I think as technology continues to improve, equipment like this is going to get better and better, but it's still really good right now. And I am looking to figure out kind of what are the limits. So the important thing for me, again, having the monocular being a little more lightweight, I will test this at length. The binoculars, I will definitely get out into the wilderness and I'll give them a good overall test. But this monocular, I'm gonna try to bring it on some substantial backpacking trips this summer. So if you're interested, keep a watch out on my channel. All my backpacking trips are gonna have some sort of probably infrared built into them in some way, shape or form. So all in all, very, very cool. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.